What's going on YouTube? So it's safe to say that both Hyundai and Kia have been killing it recently with innovative and very compelling new products, including their three row offerings, the Telluride and Palisade. These two jump straight to the top of the segment, but after getting some new updates for 2021, we want to answer the question, which of these two would be the best choice for you and your family? Without further ado, let's find out. So like always, the first thing on the agenda is to cover the pricing and equipment of these two. As you would expect, since Hyundai and Kia are both known for value, they ring in at similar price points which undercut the competition. For the Telluride, we have the SX all-wheel drive trim with the optional prestige package and the new for 2021 nightfall package. This is fully loaded and with the destination charge, it comes in at just a little under $50,000. For the Palisade, we are using the limited all-wheel drive trim, which lines up nicely against this Telluride. Its starting price is quite a bit higher, but it also has less available equipment to option on. All told, it likewise comes in just a little under $50,000. To be clear right from the start, these two are related to each other mechanically, but you certainly wouldn't be able to tell it in any external way. They both have bold and stylish designs, but the Hyundai's grille is significantly larger and has more bling. The Telluride's grille usually would also have a silver finish, but the Nightfall model gives the entire front a cool stealth look. In the corners, it has full LED headlights with the signature amber daytime running lights. On the Hyundai, they went even more unique, using two distinct clusters that are connected by a cascading LED daytime running light. However, it does not have fog lights, unlike the Kia. Checking out the sides, they are pretty much the same length, though the Palisade carries more visual heft and then they both have 20 inch alloy rims with vastly different designs. However, when you go to the back, you will see more similarities than anywhere else on the vehicles. They both have similar looking vertical LED taillights, their names spelled out across the back and dual exhaust outlets that are mounted on the right side. Now beyond the styling, both models have heated mirrors with blind spot indicators though only the Tellurides are power folding. In addition to the blind spot monitoring systems, both Hyundai and Kia give you their entire suites of active safety systems as standard equipment. That means they have automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beam headlights across the entire lineup, not just these fully loaded models. They both also come equipped with the longest warranty in the business five year and 60,000 miles for the basic and 10 year and 100,000 miles for the powertrain. However, this year Hyundai has now added three years of complimentary maintenance. Finally, the last thing to mention on the outside is that they both have 5,000 pound tow ratings with auto leveling rear suspensions. So walking up to the vehicles, both models have smart entry systems and their respective brand key fobs. For 2021, the Telluride has added remote start to the fob, just like the Palisade. Now first opening up the doors, you'll see that just like on the outside, the interiors share virtually nothing. And both are substantially more upscale than what's expected for the class featuring high-end Napa leather, finished in black and gray for these two examples. As far as the seats themselves, both have heating, ventilation, two-person memory, thigh extension, and special stitching designs. But the Palisade has four-way lumbar adjustment. Now, like I mentioned, these are both very rich looking cabins made of nice materials. So starting off with the Palisade, we have a soft touch upper dash with the middle using piano black trim and leatherette. 
The side of the center console is also padded with leather. The Telluride uses a very different mixture of materials with a stitched soft touch dashboard, very realistic faux wood trim, and then as one of my favorite parts, two large handlebars covered in Napa leather. Overall, these are two of the nicest cabins in the class, and I think material preference will just boil down to personal taste. Now checking out the gauges, this is an area where you will notice a substantial difference. The Palisade uses a 12.3 inch full digital gauge setup with high-end graphics and animations, while the Telluride sticks with a more traditional analog arrangement. This gives the Palisade more customizability and wow factor. However, both of them still have the blind spot camera system and head-up displays. And coming back to the steering wheels, both are leather wrapped, heated, and manual adjusting. Next up we have the very important aspect of storage, where the Hyundai really stands out. That's certainly not to say that the Kia is bad, since it still has more than most in the class. But the Palisade has both a giant center console, and another huge bin in front of that, which can be reconfigured with or without cup holders. And in addition to that, there is a gigantic center pass-through. Now much of the Hyundai's storage advantage comes courtesy of its electronic push-button shifter, compared to the Kia's traditional one. Regardless of your personal preference between them, both will have 360-degree camera systems when in reverse. The next stop is the climate controls, where both models give you a three-zone automatic setup with nice physical buttons. And then after that, we have the audio system. Both systems sound great, but I'll give the edge to the Palisade since it has two extra speakers and real metal speaker grills. And now that brings us to the infotainment systems. While they have different names, they are exactly the same software-wise and with regard to the 10.25 inch displays. They both have navigation, split-screen abilities, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. Finally, the last things to mention up front are that both of them have dual panel panoramic moonroofs, but the Telluride comes with a more premium suede headliner. Alright, now moving on to the rear areas. As you would expect, they share identical dimensions, and both are larger than the Highlander and Pilot. They also share most of their rear features, though not 100%. These high-end models come with heated and ventilated captain's chairs, which is a super rare feature. And they also have manual sunshades, rear climate controls, two charging USB ports, and a household outlet, just in different locations. However, I do want to point out that the Palisade's rear windows are not one-touch automatic for whatever reason. Moving on to the third row of seats, both crossovers have a very convenient one-touch folding and sliding mechanism to give you a nice pathway. Once you're back there, they are once again the same as far as measurements. Both of them will also have dedicated vents and charging USB ports, but only the Palisade has power reclining abilities. Now moving around to the rear, both have smart opening tailgates. And once they open up, you'll find some of the best cargo capacities in the class. As you would expect, they are pretty much evenly matched, besides for the fact that the Telluride has a small advantage behind the third row. That advantage is countered though by the fact that the Hyundai's third row is power folding.
we still have a really tight race. So now let's take them out on the road and see if one of them will pull out ahead. As you've seen up to this point, these two don't share much in terms of what you can see, but they share much more of the stuff that you can't see. For starters, they have the same 3.8 liter V6 engine, rated at 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, the same 8-speed automatic transmission, and the same all-wheel drive system. Of course, here in the 2021 Telluride, we're gonna have the same engine as last year, 3.8 liter V6, um, 291 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. So, really nice numbers yeah. for the class. Just like that, we are up to 60 going up a pretty, pretty steep, steep incline. Steep <laughs> uh, so plenty of power on board with this Palisade. As you would expect, the driving dynamics are also very similar, which is a great thing considering just how good they are. Both have precise and nicely weighted steering setups that make them feel lighter and more maneuverable than most of the competition. As far as your handling is concerned, even though this is a really, really large vehicle, it really feels surprisingly agile. It has that characteristic, just like the Telluride. I made a similar comment. You know, they're very large, but they feel smaller than the competition, uh, just in the way that the handling or the chassis and the steering are tuned. Uh, it just gives it a more tossable, more agile feel, which minimizes the size and heft of everything. That's not to say that everything is the same, though. The ride quality is tuned to be a bit softer on the Palisade, while the Telluride seems to be a bit tighter in terms of control. Yeah, the ride on this is really excellent. Super soft. I actually think uh, it feels maybe a little bit softer than the Telluride. Um, you know, that, that one has like uh, maybe a little bit sportier on the suspension tuning, and this one's a little bit softer and more comfort oriented. So that's a little bit of a difference you could keep in mind if you're cross shopping the two of them. But like you said, in the class, you know, this is very comfort oriented, um, definitely compares well with the Platinum version of the Highlander. Additionally, they are very quiet inside of the cabins, but the Telluride slightly edges it out in both our decibel measurements, as well as the ones done by car and driver. You know, when you get up to speed, we're going around 50 miles per hour right now. And just take a moment to listen and I will get a sound sample of just how quiet it is in here. And we're looking at 54 decibels, which is really, really good. That's one of the lowest readings that we've gotten for this strip of road. Yeah, we're looking at 55 decibels. And finally, finishing this part up, they have the same fuel economy rating of 19 city, 24 highway, 21 combined. So there you have it. These two siblings duked it back and forth the entire way through. Like I said at the beginning, they are undoubtedly two of the top products in the class. And that for most people, it will probably just come down to personal preferences on features and style. With this duo, you really can't go wrong. Anyway, thanks for joining us for this car confections comparison. And we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel to keep seeing more comparison videos as well as our signature full review videos. Take care and stay safe out there.